I think momos are my favorite dumplings. I think momos are my favorite dumplings. Are my favorite like bao, like baozi like thing. What's the most momos you can eat, man? These things are <laughs> these are, I are mean, packing the meat. They're sending me when I'm hungry like uh, a lot. What is it like to dive deep into regional Tibetan cuisine, hit up a marketplace, an underground shop, and the most popular food truck? Well, let's find out. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Queens episode of The World and Why. Today, we're in Jackson Heights, and we're gonna be trying authentic Tibetan food. Now, Andrew, we have done one Tibetan food video before, but there are so many different regional cuisines, deep cuts, dishes we haven't tried, and you know that we could not do this video without an authentic Tibetan friend, so we got the plug with us, Tashi. Hi everyone, I'm super excited to take you guys on this journey with me today. Uh, Queens has a really large population of Tibetan people. It's a really dense community. So we're gonna hit up Kumba Kitchen today, maybe some grocery stores later and some markets and it's gonna be really fun. Jackson Heights specifically is so diverse. We got Kumba Kitchen right here. One of the hottest Tibetan spots in the all of New York City, maybe the entire country. Tasha, you're gonna walk us through some dishes we've never had. I'm so excited. Let's, Let's go. go. All right, you guys, we are here at Kampa Kitchen, Jackson Heights. We're sitting in front of a crazy feast. All this food is regional to the Kham region. Yes, most of them. I know that there's what? There's three major regions of Tibet, right? There's Kham, Utsang, and Amdo. Um, we're at Kampa Kitchen, so some of the dishes um, highlight, you know, the Kampa region. And you are yeah. a Kampa person? Yes, I am. Some of these Kampa dishes I've never even seen before in my entire life, so I'm really excited. What should we lead off with? So we call this puja. It's butter tea. Um, so black tea, a little bit of milk, and traditionally it'll have yak butter in it. It's very difficult to get yak products in America, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Ooh, that's super that's smooth good. and buttery. And I heard, uh, cause the climate is so cold in Tibet that it's really good to have this butter, you know? Keeps your body moving, metabolizing, you know, and fat burning. I heard there's a lot of different versions of this, right? I think if people have not had butter in their tea, Yo, I'm not gonna you gotta lie. try this. I had, I had this a few times. This is the best version I've yeah. ever had. This is also one of like our celebratory dishes. It's called kapse. It's okay. basically fried dough. Uh, you can dip this in your butter tea. Mm. I right. usually like to let it soak for a little bit. Um, and it's so cool because depending on which household you go to, everyone makes their kapse a little different. Put the kapse in the puja. I know you guys aren't afraid of the fat because we're dipping a donut oh, no. in some butter no, tea. No, we're not. It's good. Mm -hmm. The butter tea is like, it's a little bit salty, but it's very milky and it still has that tea flavor. This is the kampa poti. This is one of our uh, like main dishes in Kampa Top. that we're really known for. Right, because it's regional. It's exactly. like, you might not have it in Lhasa, right? Exactly, so it's a uh, it's a celebratory dish. In English, it looks like a meat pie. Inside is beef. Once again, if we're into bed, it would be yak meat. They keep it really uh, natural with the spices and the seasoning, so it's not too overwhelming. You could say you're sort of an authority to speak on this because you are from Tibet, right? You are from the Kampa region, right? <laughs> Kampa puti. Sort of like a, a clam chowder bowl. These are the Tibetan hot sauces, right? Very famous. Look at that color. This is super deep red. You know, this is packing the spice. This is like such fun food, you know? Yeah. What do you guys call the hot sauce? Tsipe. Tsipe. And hit me with some tsipe. This is the first bite of the puti. Yo, that hot sauce is unlike every, wow. anything I ever had. You can really mm. taste the herbs. The coriander is really coming through and that beef is super tender. They also put a little bit of Sichuan in here. Because uh, the Kham region is pretty close to Sichuan province, right? Yep. Wow, Sichuan I got this. This chili oil looks different too. I'm excited. Which chili oil you prefer, bro? I might prefer the tsipe, because it has more garlic. So this is guma. This is blood sausage. Mm -hmm. uh, really popular in Tibet in general. This is steamed and this is sauteed, so, fried. This is the more traditional. This is the more newer kind. I've had a couple other blood sausages in my life, but actually I would say these look super plump and even juicier than the other ones. We put a little bit of tamba in there as well, which is roasted barley, Ooh. a little bit of meat, coriander, and wow. Szechuan. Tamba is what we call it, but roasted barley is kind of like our national food. It keeps you full throughout the day, so it's kind of like the nomad's food. Yuma, blood sausage. It doesn't have like that overpowering, like mm -hmm. bloody taste, but this one's really good, really easy to eat. Very savory fried guma. guma. Well, so I know the steam one's traditional, but I know why they came up with this one. Mm -hmm. I think conventionally, Maybe more people in 2020 would go with the fried one. Okay, next up we have what? So we've got the momo and we've got the tingmo. The tingmo is used to uh, kind of as a side dish for main courses like uh, like you know the peppers, sauteed peppers. This one a lot of people uh, see resemblance to baozi. Basically like a kampa momo, the wrap is a little thick. 
um, and it's a little bit more juicier. This is probably, <laughs> of Tibetan food globally, the number one, like, most exactly. exported dish. Dude, I love the filling in Momo's, because it's more beef, right? Mm -hmm. Hit me with some of that sauce. Yes. Oh, oh. This. this is the hot sauce, right? Here. Honestly, That's it. I think Momo's are my favorite dumplings, or my favorite, like, Bao, like Baozi, like thing. It's sort of like the way Andrew the Jazo from yeah. Vietnam is my favorite egg roll. The Momo is my favorite version. I just want to go somewhere with, at a high altitude right now. Can we go hiking? Yeah. Let's go climb a mountain. Okay, moving on now to our stir fried chili section. Uh, Tashi, what do we got here? So here we've got the chile, which is beef tongue, uh, sauteed. And then over here, we've got the Anaheim peppers with beef, sauteed as well. And then we've got the chicken chili, a little uh, South Asia inspiration. Mm -hmm. Growing up in Kham, you actually didn't eat this chili chicken. Not as much. That no. was like more once you got to Jackson Heights. Exactly. Because this dish in Jackson Heights is like, <laughs> is, is, is popping. So this is where I recommend to uh, dip eat. the tingmo. Oh, yeah, so okay. So we eat it with the tingmo, tingmo as, with as the your tingmo. spoon. I love that salty, buttery flavor that's imparted in everything. Yeah. So you're saying it has more flavor than a manto? I would take it for sure. All right. Chile. Chile sounds like the coolest way you can tell somebody to chill when they're being too savage. <laughs> instead of chile. 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 <laughs> See these slices of garlic in here? I love that with the peppers. The first stir fried beef tongue dish I've ever had. Next up, let's go with the uh, the beef and the peppers. Yes. You can really taste the uh, Chinese influence in there. Kampa food, you know, taking out some Sichuan influences is not a bad idea because Sichuan is like the most popular cuisine right now of, exactly. of the Chinese. So I'm like, no, you're t if you're gonna take the best parts of them and some influences, that's gonna be great. So far, I'm with wow. the chile. The last time I actually had this was uh, in Jackson Heights at a uh, Chinese Bangladeshi spot. This actually reminds me of the shout out section that I gotta do, because every time I'm in Queens, I gotta shout people out. Shout out to people at Jalal NYC. And obviously the people who helped set this up was uh, Tenzin and T. Cho mm -hmm. from yeah. Boston. Yep. So two of our other Tibetan Shout friends. So. You guys. My family lived in Manhattan, Harlem, and there's not, as you know, there's not as many Tibetan people out there, therefore there's not as many Tibetan restaurants. Uh, so a lot of the Tibetan food and cuisine that I would get was from home. Um, and then when I moved to Queens, and then there was this whole world, this restaurant itself, the Kumba Kitchen, it's for our community, it's to help feed our community, to bring them a little closer to home, but also to teach uh, the Queens community about Tibetan food, about Kumba food, you know? I think restaurants are beautiful because in a way, not only do you have a story and culture in the dishes, but you can ha even have some of the same things that a museum will have on the wall. I'm going in for Dude. more chile. This is a five out of five. I don't even like how to, yeah. like seriously, I'm not like generally, cause it's so easy to like mess it up. All right, our last and final round here at Kampa Kitchen. What are we looking at, Tashi? So we've got the Tibetan noodles here. The flavoring in the broth is super rich. They cook the um, the beef bones for at least three days. Here we've got the lefeng. Um, it's mung bean starch, so the noodle in itself doesn't have a lot of flavors, but it's in the sauce. Mm. And here we've got shogo sip sip. Um, this is basically sauteed shoestring potato. Shogo sip sip. That's a really <laughs> cool name. That's one of the coolest names for a dish. No, the Tibetan language is really cool. Shogo Go sip sip. Mmm. This dish is really good with the chopped chilies in it too. Yeah. Mm. Lafing. Lafing. Smooth. Spicy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Chukla. That's a bone broth. I can feel it. Last but not least, guys. So this we call detu. It's got butter in there, so it's a little bit more on the oh, creamier side. Yeah. Butter and congee. And yeah. dude, imagine if we were in Tibet with the yak oh, butter. That would be God. crazy in oh. yak butter congee. Everything low key got the salty butter flavor. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I've never had like buttery like rice oh. or congee. Let's go. Wow, that kind of works. All the countries and different regions around the area we call the Himalayan region. Mm -hmm. So we've got Tibet, we've got Nepal, we've got Bhutan, uh, we've got India. There's a lot of countries surrounding us. So we're all influenced by one another and it shows in the food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My favorite has got to be the Kampaputi. I haven't had beef in a bread bowl that was so fragrant and herbaceous. My favorite is the guma, uh, steamed or fried. It's just such a staple in the Tibetan cuisine. No, that was my favorite blood sausage I've ever had. My favorites, the lafing and the chile. And last but not least, I might have to say salted butter tea. Yes. This Good is crazy. Job. So cheers. Where to next, Tashi? Uh, next, we're gonna hit up some Tibetan markets. Yo, Aaron, have you ever been to a Tibetan market? No, man. <laughs> <laughs> Which means we'll see you in a bit. I know how Tibetans drink all that butter, but still keep it moving. I feel great. Let's go! So now we're going to Tibetan Market. It's actually conveniently right next to Kumba Kitchen. Tashi, are all the Himalayan spots in Jackson Heights 
all walking distance from each other? Yes, absolutely. It just makes things easier. Jackson Heights is closer to Manhattan than you think. It's not even far, I'm not gonna lie, uh, to the Flushing friends. Flushing's a little deeper. But uh, Jackson Heights, it's actually pretty close. We're not that far from uh, Corona, right? Since we just opened up yesterday, we don't have an official uh, signage yet. So it's a little bit speakeasy-ish. So we are getting the sneak preview of the Tibetan market. Let's go check it out. So we're in front of the market. Uh, this is Tibetan Cafe. We've got some snacks here. Is that a chapelet? It is a chapelet. Oh my goodness, it's a chapelet. Oh, what like what? At some yes, point. absolutely. Uh, what's that? So that is, uh, this is amdo pale. Uh, so it's a regular bread, but the difference is it's a little bit more thicker, a little chewier, and also a little sweeter. And then that is the sampa, right? That is the sampa cake, and yeah. I, someone was and I have watched three to four YouTube videos in the past 24 hours on it. So to see the sampa in person after watching the videos is like, Ooh. ah, I'm excited. We sell uh, natural gemstones, such as amber, coral, turquoise, since I was 17 years old. I collect the most antique jewelry. It's very hard to find. You guys wear for like uh, spiritual or religious reasons? Yeah. We chant like such as uh, It's like a part of a meditation. He's got prayed on, man. Yeah. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> this is... Uh, Hot or hot pot or? For hot pot. Oh, oh shoot. Wow. Yeah, this is antique, you know? We were from Tibet. Made in China. The Mongolians. Mongol, right. like warrior teapot. Yeah, yeah, Mongol. Yo, that looked, I thought it was a genie <laughs> lamp or something. <laughs> it is. In a Mongolia, Tibet, or any Himalayan region, butter tea, right? You use uh, wood, wood cup. When you drink Coca-Cola out of the glass, it tastes better. Yeah. When you drink yak butter tea out of the wood, it tastes better. And this one is for chung. Oh. Wind cup. When Tibetans drink something, they drink it. They drink a <laughs> lot of it. This is our shot glass. <laughs> <laughs> this shoe is um, normally like a... Look at the midsole on these. The very traditional shoes. Okay. It's all handmade. If you just put Supreme back here, I mean, this That's is the hottest crazy. thing now. What are some really common, uh, maybe two to three Tibetan sentences or phrases that like we can put out there? Tashi Dele. Tashi Dele have uh, so many different meanings. Tashi Dele is... Uh, Welcome. Thank you. Hello. I wish you well. Good luck. You don't have to go so hard on the K, but Tashi Dele. Tashi Dele. What would be one other one that we gotta say? Like Tering. 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 So, so that means wish you a long life. Tashi Dele. Tering. Mm -hmm. I like it. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. That's tight. We've got a traditional Tibetan breakfast right here. This is as authentic as it gets. Uh, we've got samba in here. We've got butter tea, um, a little bit of yak butter as well, and also yak cheese in there. So this is also samba right here, but a exactly. different style. We pray before eat in the breakfast. Jaga penjim pela karam che pemanju na kolanda on the tata phono sambu kolanda ujiran bo che la che bo. We pray. So you would drink the liquid first, and then when you have yeah. the stuff left over, then you start kneading it together exactly. and squeezing it. Exactly. This particular style is called a kade. It's like eating with your mouth or with your tongue. I like how you drink the soup, and then you kind of lick the last bit of the soup, and then you pull it together. Yeah, just like this. And every morning, this is a, a very, like, heavy breakfast. No, you can use this, and then you put tea in here. So just like this, and then you take a bite. Would you try? Yeah, I'll yeah. try it. It's buttery, slightly salty, very nutty and sticky. So right here, we've got this chapale. So uh, this is chapale. Yo, I remember last time I had this a little, oh! It's juicy! <laughs> My bad. Yo, that's what I've been looking for. Hand me one of those halves immediately. Chapale. When you bite it, you gotta like suck up the juice. That's good. The chapelet is a five out of five. Perfect. It feels like an empanado. Mm -hmm. It's like a similar form, but man. I need to wash it down with some puja. I noticed that this yak butter tea had a little bit more spices in it than the one at the restaurant. Last but so. not least. This is sampa cake. Something that our New York community in Queens kind of came up with. On the bottom, you've got the sampa, And on the top, um, it's our version of a vanilla ice cream. So it's a vanilla ice cream um, mixed in with different kinds of herbs and spices. Together, they complement each other really well and some raisins. Oh, bro, <laughs> the David, raisins sampa, sampa cake. cake. You know what I like about it? It tastes like something from a thousand years ago mixed with something from 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very much, I mean, that's really what this dessert is. That ice cream is really good. I'm just gonna make a bad health decision, but the right 
foodie decision. <laughs> so this is a kata. Um, it's a silk scarf. Basically, we use it for ceremonial situations. You put it around their neck, and it's almost like a, a tashitele. If someone do something for you special, or you know, you really need to say thank you so much. So we offering for kada. I want an offering for you. Oh, first. Wow. Thank you. Thank for coming. Tashi Thank delay. you so much. Yeah, for you. Okay. okay. All right, Dan. Dan's getting the. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your coming. Yeah. All right, so we just left Benton Market, and now that was very traditional. And now we're heading to pretty much like how most people in 2020 might ex first experience Tibetan food, which is these Momo trucks. It's fun to say, it's delicious. You can <laughs> fill it with a bunch of different things, right? Uh, obviously, Momo is a really common dish in Tibet, uh, but also the Momo truck is just easy. It's easy to make it to go. It's accessible and a lot of people know it. And a lot of, you know, a lot of people know dumplings. I've never really got to participate in any um, ceremonies like that before. So this got this kata on us, this is dope. But I got to say right behind us, Andrew, this is real Queens right here. You just park. <laughs> All yeah. up on the sidewalk. I don't deny I let you do this in the city. Let's go. That's why I like it. So, oh, this, oh no, this is not, not the truck. Oh, <laughs> this is we, on we the Momo. Walk, yo, we just walking by Momo yeah. trucks to the point where I'm like, yo, There's I don't so even... many. You're going to put walk past like right. several. Yeah. In this general area, I can count at least four. Some of these trucks are 24 hours. So, a lot of people, when they go out and they're hungry, they'll just stop by and get Momos at like 5 a.m. That is something I did not expect that you would get drunkies in Momo. Yeah. No, it really feels international right here. And I feel like I'm in, it could be New Delhi, it could be Lhasa, I, I don't know. Mom's Momo truck is right outside of Tenzin Salon. That is a Tibetan salon. We just landed here at Momo truck. Yum yum man, tell us about Mom's Momo. So we basically opened uh, four years ago. The reason we called it Mom's Momo is actually the recipes come from my mom. Oh, yeah. He's our big brother. Yeah. Your guys' Momos at Mom's Momo taste way different than even the other Momo trucks. Most is different, different yeah. yeah. We really want to give the glimpse of what Momos back in Tibet taste like What, here, what so. region of Tibet are you from? Ando. How are the Momos different in each region? I wouldn't say it's a big difference, but the ingredients, the, the stuff they put inside, the thinner the skin there, the best it is. If you look at the skin, like you can see the, you know, the meat inside, so that's good, man. That means that Momos, are, you know, it's killer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah, so excited. I that's want right. to do it I the Tibetan <laughs> way, man. <laughs> What he said in Amdo, you're gonna love these momos. <laughs> so this is beef, three of each, one, uh, three steam and three fried. And this is a potato, again, three, three. And uh, this is a veggie, and uh, this is a chicken. Wow, steam. Okay. Beef. So much soup in that. Wow. It really tastes like soup. Fried beef. Huh? I'm dipping it in the sauce. The fried beef. Oh, with the sauce. All right, I'm, I'm going for the lafing now. This is really good too. Really refreshing. Yeah. Sort of like a contrast mm -hmm. to the momos, which is more hearty, oily, but in the best of ways. This is the chicken one. I, I gotta go steamed steam first. Yeah. I, I think if I go with fried, then the steam just won't. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. What's the most momos you can eat, man? These things are, these are, I are mean, packing the meat. Personally, me, when I'm hungry, like uh, a lot. <laughs> steam <laughs> chicken momos. Like, right this now. is the so. best chicken dumpling. I've ever had the best chicken dumpling I've ever had because you know I've had chicken dumplings before yeah but is none of them have been as juicy as this hey kudos to you wow. Wow. I gotta eat a whole fried one see I'm even getting full that's how good this is well, honestly these momos are booming right now oh my goodness tastes like a really deep chicken stew inside mm -hmm. of a momo hey I can see why momos are blowing up and especially Whoa. mom's momo is selling out like hotcakes last but not least wow. what are you guys going for I'm running out of space so I can't eat everything fried, fried yeah All right. <laughs> I'm going to go with steamed potato I'm gonna go with uh uh, steamed veggie. Momos are really fun to eat. Now you can pick it up, it stays together, you can eat it with your hand, you can dip it. There's juice in it, there's so much going on. Personally, I really hope that, uh, you know, you see like a, everybody knows halal, right? Momo is, I want it really become like international food. If you guys want to check out, we're on here, Jack's Knife, Broadway by the Wendy's. Okay, last but not least on our Himalaya Heights crawl through Jackson Heights. Today, we're here at Shangri-La of Nepal. It's almost like a Himalayan shop with a bunch of different little knicks and knacks, clothes, uh, snacks, spices. So you'll see a variety of a bunch of things. Let's go ahead downstairs. <laughs> So this is kind of like your fruit leather sort of type thing. Exactly. Okay. If you guys like zamba, you've got a bag of zamba available right wow. here. Oh, that's what she was mixing it in with. Yeah. The no. tea mix. 
For the puja? Puja, yeah. So Yak it's dry. Yo, cop that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so this is chura. It's like a really popular Himalayan snack or like candy. Um, it's just dry cheese, but it's really hard. All right, let's get it. These oh, are the okay. Air Zoom Everests. Of course, we had to end off on some Tibetan snacks, Himalayan snacks from the shop. Uh, they had a mystical dog in there too. Kind of like yeah. Nine Tails Pokemon. I don't know if you guys know about that. This is Amdo Pale. We just picked up from this truck right over here. Uh, Himalayan fresh food. So it's like a flatbread. Let's, let's yeah. bust it open. I heard it's sweet. That's what she it said. Is. So do you eat it with anything or you just eat it straight up? You can eat it with like butter, tea, whatever Yo, you want. Yo, Andrew, these Coffee are syrup. the dishes. And I was when I was doing the research yesterday on Wikipedia, these are the dishes that I've seen. In my hand, I have dried yak cheese. Dried yak cheese. It's a little hard, so it stays in your mouth for a, a while. Yo, it's almost like emanating that same vibe from the butter tea, but just slow release. Yeah. Gotta be careful with this one not to bite it too hard. I'm the pale. Slightly sweet. Imagine this with like butter tea though. Kind of dry, but like buttery at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to explain. You guys notice there's more buttery in the middle? The butter sweet flavor kind of creeps up on you. Shout out to Himalayan Delight, nature's best. So this is another version of the chura, except it's called chutpi. This looks like some old, like kind of some dried smoked gouda. Mm-hmm. Whoa, whoa, way more herbaceous whoa. than you yeah, thought. <laughs> this does not taste like Western cheese. Almost like hardened butter and milk. Yeah, I'm not saying this in any type of bad way. It kind of tastes like a block of wood. The longer you keep it in your mouth, like the flavor changes. I'm gonna leave it in my mouth. I'm gonna leave it in the back right now. It's a journey. I do <laughs> like it better than the first one we had. <laughs> so this is a uh, mixed bun. Uh, sometimes we call these, this one is called titora, uh, this is called pong, and they mix it with different types of uh, spices, with sugar. You can use this as kind of spread, or you just squeeze it out like a... Oh no, you just go for it, yeah, you eat okay. it. I gotta say, the amdo pare, the sweet bread, that was like the most unassuming looking thing with the nicest, sweetest, buttery flavor. I would like to eat that with some other things. Do you know those uh, Mexican candies, like the dried plums? Chimango. So chimango, yeah. yeah. Himalayan chimango style. Is that a chili in there? Yeah. That's a chili in the fruit. Let's do it. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh, no, this tastes like a more raw version of like a, a fruit roll up. Mm -hmm. I wanna say like dried orange peel or fruit mm -hmm. peel. Mm -hmm. It has that saltiness. It does taste like something I had before. Kind of has that sour sweetness and spiciness, almost like those tamarind candies mm -hmm. that maybe some of you guys used to eat growing up. Yeah, no, I like it. Yeah? <laughs> I like it. If you put it on something, mix it up with a little bit more um, sugar, it'd be perfect. No, I like that, that plum candy you like. To wrap it up there, yo, big shout out to Tashi. Thank you so much for, for being so knowledgeable and, and making it fun and taking us on this uh, little Tibetan tour. We, we encourage everybody else out there to check out all the Himalayan and Tibetan spots out here. Man, it's an amazing community and it's really, really good food. For sure, the Chapelle uh -huh. is the OG for me. My OG thing I love from Little Tibet, but then my new thing it was the chile. I'm gonna get that kapaputi, which is kind of that fragrant, uh, herbaceous beef that's in that bread bowl. Favorite thing, I think just doing this journey with you, I think uh, usually when I go eat, I'll just go to one spot, but just going from one place to another, it just made me appreciate my community and my culture more. Another one of my big takeaways was that there's so many different regions. There's three major regions. They all have their own style of foods. You got Usan, you got Amdo, and of course, Kam. That was really dope to learn that. I actually didn't know about the three different regions of Tibet, so. Man, you know, if they've been making momos for I don't know how many centuries. Let me tell you that. They're pretty damn good at this point. And definitely the chicken ones over at Mom's Momo was crazy. Ooh. The chicken one was actually one of the best ones things I had today, man. Oh, we got, yeah, 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 no, no, no. We got Mom's Momo was fire. Mom's Momo was fire. Tashi Dale, Tuchiman. Thanks so much. Thank you for watching that video. And in the comments down below, let us know if there is another neighborhood around New York that we got to check out because we will be filming in Queens more. Guys, that was the Jackson Heights Tibetan episode of the World NY. Thank you so much for tuning in. Shout out to Tashi. Shout out to Jackson Heights. Shout out to Queens. We out. Peace. <clears throat> you know. <clears throat> All right, you guys. <clears throat> my bad. Oh, we got some more. It's a lot. Uh, where's the soup? Oh, that's butter too. All right. <clears throat> I, don't think it's the butter. I don't think it's the butter. Let me wash it down with a Momo. What? I had to wash it down with a Momo. I'm good, guys.